Well, hello and welcome again to another OpenShift Commons briefing. We're really pleased to have with us today Alvin Pickey from Info.io, a recent um, new member to the OpenShift Commons. Um, and a number of the folks from Weaveworks are here as well. Um, today, the topic that we're talking about today is testing web services with um, traffic control um, using some of the Weavework scopes and um, showing it working on. I saw Albin give this talk at KubeCon in London, and I knew I had to get him to do it um, on OpenShift because it's one of the most full testing techniques I've seen in a long time. And as well, it also shows off um, a lot of what you can do with Weavescope. Um, so what I'm hoping we'll do today is get, get Albin to tell us all about testing um, and traffic control. But then we'll also try and push some of the folks from Weavescope we work, so we have a number of them on the call, Lons and, and Ilya and others, um, to maybe give us a little bit of a, another demo in the second half during the Q&A of um, some of the new features um, of WeWorks scope product and uh, working with some of the new features of Kubernetes. So this should be a really interesting talk um, and an interesting Q&A, so I'm going to let Alvin introduce himself and get away from there. Thank you for the introduction. So I will talk about testing web services with traffic control on OpenShift. I will start by introducing myself. I am Alban. Um, I work on the container runtime rocket uh, in the last month, and I'm currently the tech lead uh, on rocket. And previously, uh, two years ago, I worked on traffic control for different use cases. It was for multimedia application in car for the automobile industry. And I'm trying to uh, reuse that knowledge in a, in a different context. Um, I work at Kinfolk. Uh, we are a Berlin-based company, and we work on uh, different uh, foundational Linux technology. Um, we work on Rocket with CoreOS. We work on Systemd, and we have um, 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 the uh, part of the Systemd team is in Berlin as well, so that's uh, quite good. And we work on uh, Linux, so whenever we need to make change on Linux, we can do that as well. And work on uh, OS3. OS3 is a kind of a git for uh, operating system binaries. Um, and you can find more about that, but I will uh, start with the plan. So uh, I want to talk about what is traffic control and how does it work on Linux, and then how it can be used for testing applications. And then I will do uh, two demos. Um, the demo will be on OpenShift. Um, it will use the Kubernetes, and it's, uh, it is based on uh, with scope. So uh, first, what is traffic control? How does it work on Linux? Um, so the traffic control uh, exists for a long time, and it can uh, be used for different uh, use cases. Use it can be used to uh, have a fair distribution of the bandwidth. When um, a web server is connected to several clients, uh, we don't want one client to have uh, to be starved star and have a share amount of bandwidth between the clients. We could want to reserve bandwidth to uh, specific applications. Or we want to avoid buffer bloat. Buffer bloat is when um, a router on the internet has a too large buffer and uh, that can introduce problems with latency and uh, congestion on the network. Um, but here we don't use uh, traffic control for that. We will use traffic control for testing uh, web services. Um, traffic control on Linux is implemented in the Linux kernel using uh, something called queuing discipline. On the queuing discipline or queue disk is uh, something you can plug on a network interface. For example, on ETH0, we can plug a queuing discipline, and that will uh, decide uh, what to do with the packet to emit, when to emit them, and uh, which packet to emit first. Um, queuing discipline can be configured on Linux with a TC command, and it uses a netlink, netlink sockets to talk to the kernel to uh, decide. Uh, to talk to the kernel to configure the queuing discipline. Um, by default, there is always a queuing discipline, um, a basic one. There are different kinds of queuing discipline. Uh, I will just 
uh, mention one example here. Uh, this example is uh, called the stochastic fairness queuing, SFQ. On this one, uh, put the different TCP connection in a different uh, queue, and then uh, do a one robin over them to select uh, which one, which packet to emit next. Um, that's not the one used by people, but uh, just an example of uh, queuing discipline. And there are uh, plenty of different queuing discipline that can be configured differently. Um, but how can we use that for testing? Uh, actually, there is a queuing discipline called a network emulator or NetEM. And that uh, NetEM has different uh, configuration parameters. There is, uh, for example, the bandwidth. We can configure it to limit the bandwidth of uh, the traffic emitted by the network interface, or we can increase the latency, or we can say, hey, I want to have 2% packet uh, loss. Or uh, plenty of other options that you can find in a, a new page of NetEM. And we are going to use that. Um, so, but we don't want to use that uh, to configure the, um, the machine, the, co the computer as a whole, but we would like to configure only the network used by uh, one application. And one way to do that is to use containers. Containers can, um, each container can run a specific application and that will run in a different network space. That means that, um, that network space will have uh, its own network interface. In this example, um, we have container one with one network interface called MTH0 and container two having a different network interface. And then we can uh, have a testing framework configuring a queuing discipline on each specific uh, network interface to add some latency or to drop some packet or things like that. Um, we want to do that in OpenShift in uh, Kubernetes. So OpenShift uh, use Kubernetes and in Kubernetes there is a different, um, there is the concept of pods. Pods are a group of applications running together in the same context, in, uh, in this case, in the same network and space. And they can communicate together on the network. Um, and we want to configure the uh, network parameter on each uh, pod to say, for example, this, uh, this pod has a high latency or uh, different parameter for the bandwidth. And I want to be able to uh, configure different scenarios. Um, and for that, I um, implemented a small daemon called TCD for traffic control daemon that will run on each uh, Kubernetes node. And it's a stateless daemon, and it will receive command um, on the Unix socket, either through gRPC or through DBus. And it accepts uh, remote. Uh, method calls such as uh, configure egress to say uh, I want this um, network uh, interface to have uh, some latency or some uh, limited bandwidth. Um, you can find the source of TCD on, online on GitHub. Um, and then I uh, integrated a TCD with Wavescope. Um, I will show you a demo um, after. Um, with Scope uh, is an application showing you uh, um, all, the, all your pods on the cluster, or all your containers on the cluster. And uh, in this uh, slide, we see one view of one uh, container. And I added um, a few buttons here uh, related to traffic control. Um, so when we, um, uh, I will show you in the name after uh, what it does. But uh, we have uh, a width uh, scope is composed by uh, two parts. The width, sorry, uh, width scope app, which is the web view, and a uh, scope probe, which run on every node. And a scope probe will receive the commands when we click on the buttons and uh, to talk to the traffic control daemon and configure the traffic control for each specific pod. Um, I will start a demo now, so I'm stopping my slides. Um, so first, um, this is OpenShift, and I pre-configured uh, different um, applications running on it. I can see it on the web UI here. 
or I can see it from the uh, terminal using uh, OC commands or kubectl since it's using uh, Kubernetes. Um, in this example, I have different applications. And the first one I will show you was one called ping test. And this is actually just a, a very small script. This is starting a replication controller, um, three pods, and each of them will run a simple script. That script will download a small file on the internet every two seconds repetitively. So um, now I'm going to rip scope. Uh, now I have a view on all my pods, all my containers, and I can see effectively uh, the three uh, ping test pods that I requested. Uh, OpenShift. So if I click on one of them, with scope allows me to uh, have different statistics. So I can monitor my pod. I can see, um, for example, the commands that is running, uh, if it takes uh, much CPU or not. Since it mostly does sleeping, it doesn't take CPU. That's good. And I have some uh, button to interact uh, with it. One of them is called attached. I'm clicking on it. What it does is will um, show the terminal uh, as a, uh, related to this uh, container. So now I can see actually what it does. It, it uh, downloads a small file, a 15 bytes file on the internet every two seconds. And I see my network is quite fast. It takes less than one second to do that. Um, but let's see one of the three buttons. I have added one button uh, called traffic speed uh, slow. Uh, medium or fast. Let's click on the uh, this one. What it does, it will um, configure the latency to add some latency to that um, container. Uh, it only does that not on a complete computer, but only on that specific uh, container. So the other um, container should be uh, unmodified. So since I click on this button, I see that it takes more time to download the small file. It takes more than one second. And if I click on the slow button, it will uh, add a latency of two seconds. Um, and since downloading a file on the internet will have, um, it has some, um, it does several round trip to establish the TCP connection. It actually takes more than six seconds. Uh, so I let this one like that, and I will see another ping test, that's another replica of it. And this one should not be affected by the configuration, because each uh, container has their own configuration. OK. Uh, that was uh, the integration with CCD, but how can we use it for uh, real testing for that? Um, I have when um, I took the uh, Kubernetes example application called Guestbook. Um, I will show it right now. So, Guestbook is a really simple application. Um, it has a front end written with Apache on PHP and a backend in Redis. And I can add uh, some message here. And they store it in the backend. And I see here it seems to work quite fine. But actually, does it really work? Here I have a good network connection, so I might not see the problem with that. Um, but I'm going to go back to Rivescope um, and find. Um, uh, sorry, I will find the correct. So I found the, uh, the container um, running Apache on PHP. That's the front end of my application, the application that you can see just here. And I will add uh, some latency. So here I got two second latency. So uh, if I refresh the page, I press refresh, I see it quite slow. I see the uh, wheel is spinning here. Uh, does something? Ah, no, it's refreshed. But actually, where are my messages? They seem to be lost. Uh, are they really lost? Did I? Ah, no, they appear. It was just slow. Um, I think that's a 
uh, user experience uh, bug because when I refresh, at first it says uh, it's refreshed, and then all my messages are lost, and then I don't have any user feedback, and later they come. Um, it would be good to have uh, some message, say loading or something, some user feedback. Uh, and for that, I developed a, a new version of the guestbook. It's uh, really similar, but it has um, uh, different um, user feedback. Uh, now I will add some latency as well to that um, new version. Oh, yeah, I will show you how it's um, config. So if I go back to the list of um, uh, replication controller, uh, I uh, put one replication controller for the version one of the guestbook uh, and one for the version two of the Facebook, uh, sorry, of the guestbook, and they both connect to the same uh, Redis uh, backend. So in this one, that's the new version, I will put some latency there. And if I go to, uh, I click on version two, here I see the message loading. So that's a um, uh, user feedback message it means that the JavaScript code which we are fetching the data is still running. And if I refresh again, take some time to refresh to get the new page. And here it's a loading, so I know that uh, it's not finished. Okay, and now I will add a new message. Good evening. And I have another uh, a message uh, sent in. So uh, I know that is not finished yet. So that's a good um, cool user feedback. Um, so far, I only tested manually. That's, uh, I go to Firefox, I click on button, and uh, I change the configuration thanks to Um It would be quite good to automatize that. If I have a unit test, I don't want uh, unit test to require a tester to click on Firefox to check if it works correctly. Um, so uh, let me go back to my slides. So uh, uh, I would like to have um, to, to do that in a testing framework, and there are different testing frameworks which exist. Um, there is a, a Selenium to um, simulate different kind of browser like Firefox, Firefox Chrome, and others. Um, there is Agouti and Gingo and Gomega. I will show you uh, a demo with that. So here I have uh, two files. Um, and that's configure a small uh, unit, uh, so small, small test. I use uh, Agouti uh, connected to uh, the Chrome driver, and it will run the test, the following test. That's a small script written in Go. And what it does, I um, hope you can see, it connects to the following web page. Yeah, it expects to uh, fetch the page correctly, and then it can find in the HTML page, um, this uh, specific uh, attribute in the HTML page. And then it expects to find the message loading. And uh, with that, I can automatize the test process. I can uh, check that um, it gets all the message or the user feedback I want. And I can run this uh, inside Gingo. And Hopefully, it will load uh, Chrome in this example. Um, since I configured the latency to quite high, it takes some time to load the page. And then the Golang script checks that uh, the message loading is actually there. And then you send a message, and it's uh, checked that it's written sending. And then the, um, the test passed with success. Um, if I was actually not using control, uh, it might not be possible to do that because the message might be so fast uh, that um, the, 
the test might not even see it. So let's see if I put it back to fast. Um, it might or might not work. So here it the page really fast. But um, actually, the uh, script did not have time to, um, to get the information from the HTML page before it go away. So that's um, my demo for today. Um, and I would like that to be uh, this kind of test with uh, traffic control. I would like that to be developed more and that more web service use this kind of techniques to develop, to test their application. Um, and I have a wish list of things that uh, we don't implement but I would like uh, to have. For example, when, when we attach a queuing discipline on a network interface, we apply the same rules for all the traffic, but um, with my implementation, it's not yet possible to uh, classify the traffic in different tasks. Uh, for example, I would like to uh, classify um, traffic on HTTP, to one IP address or to TNS or and, and to apply different latency and different parameters on it. It's possible to do that on Linux. And there is uh, on Linux you can attach on network interface queuing discipline on filters and um, classes. And there is one filter called uh, U32. Uh, what it does is uh, inspect the uh, network packet and look inside and applying a mask on it to detect. Uh, uh, for example, what uh, destination port it uses, or what uh, destination IP it has. And based on that, you can classify the traffic into different classes, and uh, each classes can have different queuing disciplines. So you can attach a network emulator queuing discipline with uh, uh, some latency, another one with some packet drop, etc. Um, my uh, small demo, TCD, uh, doesn't even on that, but it will be possible to add uh, that feature. Uh, it will be possible to um, call, um, to use TCD to configure the network uh, traffic control so that one pod can uh, have different parameters when it talk to one pod or another. So, for example, when it talk to this pod, to have a latency of 101 milliseconds, or to this pod actually drop all the packets. I think this kind of thing could be useful for testing, uh, for example, uh, the raft consensus algorithm, which is used in ETCD. Uh, ETCD has, um, uh, implements a membership um, protocol. Um, it, it send, each node sends a uh, head bid at a specific interval, depending on the configuration, uh, every 100 milliseconds. And then, if uh, there is no connection, from, uh, there is an election timeout, and we start a new election to uh, select the new leader. And if, um, if we have a high latency, like five seconds, I suspect uh, it might uh, disconnect the node. And uh, I would be interested in testing that with traffic control. Um, there is more techniques that, which could be used with a Barclay Packet Filter, BPF. It's possible to write uh, some program in C and compile them in a specific machine language, in BPF, and upload that in the kernel. And that would be uh, useful so that the um, queuing discipline can use that program to uh, decide how to classify the um, the packets, so you could write more complex rules with that. Um, recently, uh, BPF was extended into extended BPF, and it implements a new uh, feature called uh, eBPF maps. Maps are actually a hash table that's uh, in, some, in memory, which can be shared between the kernel and user space. So that hash table can be uh, wished via uh, TCD to read some statistics. And the queuing discipline could execute the program and uh, update the hash tables um, in memory. And I think that might be interesting to develop that. 
Um, thank you. That's uh, the end of almost the end of my goal. Um, if you want to try the um, demo yourself, you can uh, get that GitHub history, and it has instruction to repeat the demo step by step. And the source code is available, and you can read the blog post uh, that Alessandro here uh, posted recently. Um, uh, just before stopping, um, I would like to mention the System B conference in Berlin soon, in September. And uh, I will be at the container con uh, in Toronto. Which is an awesome place to, to go and hang out and, and learn about this stuff. There will be a, a CNCF day there, and most of the Cloud Native Foundation folks will be there um, uh, talking and kind of networking a little bit and trying to promote um, work that we're all. Thanks, Alvin. Alvin, I have a quick question um, regarding you. You talked about um, this being a number of these things being on your wish list. Um, where where does that work need to be done uh, in order to get the, the your wish list fulfilled? Is that on TV or is that something that that is just something that needs to be configured into Weave Scope? Or if, if someone wants to work um, on that, where do, where do they need to go? Let, let me go back to this slide. So the uh, feature in the kernel are already implemented for a while, so that work is done. Um, but uh, in this slide, I show um, the demand award TCD. Um, at the moment, only work with very basic feature. It's only it can only change the latency and the, um, the bandwidth on packet drop. But it could uh, it receive command on uh, on gRPC or the bus uh, remote uh, method calls, and it could would be possible to add more method calls to add uh, more feature, and then TCD when configuring um, the network traffic control could call the um, TC to uh, do that. So the, the question was where, where to do that code. It will be possible to do it in TCD and to, um, and then uh, with Scott could connect to that if there is a UI in with Scott to, to do that. Um, or it could be an external uh, framework, testing framework. Yeah, so that's that's great. Good. I, I thought that's where you where you wanted to point people to. So um, perhaps we can round up a few other folks to collaborate with on getting that done. Um, that's really what we're trying to do here at, at Commons is to find other people to collaborate, contribute the code, and give you some feedback on the work. Um, I know we also have a number from Weavescope on the call and. Um, I would love it if I could coerce um, one of them. There aren't any questions, but you did a great job, Alvin, answering most of the questions. I think the questions will come on the email list afterwards. Um, but um, I'm wondering if we could get Alphonse maybe to share his screen and um, and show off a little bit of some of the new features of WeScope because I think it would be the Kubernetes. Sure. That would be great. Um, we'll do that and sneak that in here today too. Um, hello, I'm Alfonso Acosta, and I'm a software engineer at WeaveWorks, working at the Scope team. And uh, Alvin has done a pretty good job at showing some of the capabilities of of Scope. But I wanted to show uh, what we've been very recently working very hard on, which is the deep integration with Kubernetes. Uh, by the way, this all works on uh, on OpenShift as well, but uh, I didn't have an OpenShift uh, cluster around, so I I'm going to be demoing um, a Kubernetes cluster instead. Uh, the first feature we added, which uh, seems simple but shouldn't be undervalued, is uh, how you install Scope on Kubernetes. Uh, a lot of monitoring solutions are are complicated to install. And we tried, uh, it's actually part of the philosophy of WeWorks to make things as seamless as possible for, for developers and operations. And we've put together a little service 
which generates uh, the Kubernetes resources for you so that you can install scope with a single command. I've already installed it, so it will, uh, it will tell you that everything exists. But it's as simple as uh, using the uh, URL capability of kubectl in Kubernetes. Kubectl is the command line CLI for, for Kubernetes. And it allows you to create to deploy uh, scope in your infrastructure with a single command. Uh, it will create an engine in, in every single machine uh, in your Kubernetes cluster. And uh, what happens when you connect to scope is that you get this view. In fact, uh, our awesome front-end team has been working on a on a high contrast view for this uh, type of presentations. I hope you can see it more clearly now. Uh, what we're seeing here is a very simple application in which we have multiple clients, which you can see here and here, obtaining information uh, from a web service, which goes through a front end, connects to an app, uh, and it, it accesses uh, search services, a database to know how many times uh, the service was accessed, uh, so on and so forth. And uh, what Album has, this is the container view, by the way, what you're, each of these hexagons represents a container. Uh, what Album hasn't been showing is the new um, uh, Kubernetes related views. So they follow the same philosophy as, as the container view you've seen before. But instead of showing containers, you're showing pods. Edges represents connection, represent connections between pods. You see how many uh, containers a, a pod has and how they're connected together. And we have also added uh, more views. Uh, we have views for replica sets and deployments and services. And we have rich contextual information about um, each of the pods. So for instance, if we clicked on a client, it will show you to what pods is being connected at this very moment. It also will show you the pods and you can navigate through them. Now, this is the visuals of the pod. In fact, I could be showing uh, the logs of the client by clicking on this command. Actually, the client doesn't log anything to, uh, to standard output, but we could, uh, show that in the front end, for instance. And we would be able to see the, the request, here they go, incoming into the, into the client. Uh, so scope is not only a visualization product, but also a monitoring and controlling product. Uh, a, a typical use case is uh, you have your infrastructure and you want to scale it up. Right, and you want to, for instance, add an extra client to add more load, or you want to add another front end. You would do that in Kubernetes through uh, replication. Well, in 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 uh, a few months ago, you would do that through replication controllers, but now they've introduced deployments and replica sets. So, in order to scale the client, the client has a corresponding deployment, and it says it has uh, two replicas. But let's add an extra one. We have two controls here to reduce the number of replicas or, or increase them. If we click on plus and wait for a little bit, we'll see that the number of uh, client pods should uh, increase. It will take a little bit, but hold on. <laughs> Let me check again. Okay. <laughs> uh, it doesn't seem to be uh, working at this point, probably because it's a local cluster. But um, if we uh, waited uh, for a bit, we should be able to get. Oh, here, here we go. We have uh, three rep. We have uh, these are three replicas, and. Uh, There you go. Now we have three pods. Uh, we also have contextual information about the processes running in the pod. 
Uh, we have the pod IPs, which are always very useful. And uh, we also introduced a new feature, which is not um, related to Kubernetes, but a general feature, and uh, which allows us to search uh, textually. So for instance, if we wanted to uh, search containers by, uh, by IP or by CPU, we will be able to, to see them here. Let's see if we have uh, an example. Here we we highlight all the all the client uh, containers, and it also shows us um, what other views uh, contain those 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 names. And I think that's uh, yeah, more or less what I wanted to show you. <laughs> if if you have any questions, I'll be uh, very happy to answer them. That's that, that that is like super useful for people who are hosts or operators. Um, and, and just really, it's very a very nice, very nice visualization of um, everything that's going on under the hood. So, I I actually don't see any questions in the the chat at the moment. Um, I think that that um, between the blog posts that Alexandro wrote and the work that Alvin did um, here today, I think we. Um, covered a lot of territory and answered um, gave gave some really good insights into how to how to use um, Weavescope and I'm I'm looking forward to trying it out on um, on OpenShift. Um, as probably everybody knows we have OpenShift online and OpenShift dedicated so I'm thinking I can coerce um, the operations folks in testing it out too. So uh, I think that there's going to be some interesting use cases coming up in larger deployment some of this work. I'm really um, appreciative of you taking the time today to, to showcase all of this. And um, we will be posting this as a recording on YouTube and in the blog.openshift.com. Um, links will be there and to the, to the YouTube and other places. And we will definitely see you, Albin, in, um, in Toronto and, and next in two weeks in Berlin. Maybe there. And if anyone um, has any questions, they're welcome mm -hmm. to pop it up. I see one. Ilya, do you want to try and show the install process on OpenShift now? I mean, if we have time, sure. Yeah, yeah I'm, I've got time to record. We've got a few more minutes. Yeah, cool. go for it. Okay, yeah, right. That's only going to take a few minutes. Yeah. Yep. So, um, okay, screen sharing. <coughs> Inside desktop, right? Okay, so if we go to. Then I'm going to coerce you into writing up as a blog post. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so uh, I was just going to show really quick how you install Scope on OpenShift. Oh, perfect. Can, can everybody see my terminal here? Is that quite good font? Yep. Font size? That works. Okay, cool. So um, I've written down some notes here, just in case I forget. So I've just logged into a fresh OpenShift VM. For the purpose of this demo, I've prefetched the images, so we won't have to wait for um, um, images to download from Docker Hub. And uh, I see login. And uh, login as admin here. Yeah. OK, cool. Um, I create a new project. Um, Okay. Um, next, uh, I need to run a couple of commands here to uh, apply a specific policy for um, the scope to work properly on OpenShift. Administrative privileges. Okay, so um, we we should be all set. And uh, now this is this is basically the command that installs leave scope. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot the scheme. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so we have this. Um, let me just. Um, yeah. So we we have this URL which you pass to OC create or kubectl if you like, and that uh, that will install scope on Kubernetes or OpenShift. 
all the same URL for both. And um, right now, um, if we do get pods here, we should see some pods being created. Okay. Okay, well, in the meantime, I can log into OpenShift console here. And I mean, this is obviously a default install from Vagrant. Okay. Loading. Yeah, there we go. Um, okay, cool. We have this two containers running. One, uh, there is potentially what there is is a um, there's a probe and uh, the app. So those are the two components, and uh, probe is what runs on each node, and uh, that runs as a daemon set. And uh, the app is uh, just a, a regular replication controller or replica set, if you like. And uh, there is also a service for the app. Right. So now I'd like to access the app, and uh, I'll go to the OpenShift console here, find scope. And uh, create a route for it. Okay, cool. And this should give me a zip.io URL that I can access. And uh, boom, here we go. So uh, this loads Scope UI. Uh, it's still um, still thinking about it. Still thinking, yeah. Um, so essentially, this uh, this is what you need to install it. Okay, here we go. Um, it loaded this thing. Okay. Oh, have to reload. Yeah, this. I, I might be running a couple of more VMs. So, <laughs> yeah, this, uh, maybe the reason why it's slow. Um, okay, what else? And uh, I mean, I'll also create uh, an app here that we can look at. See new project my app and I uh, have this uh, really quite simple app here. Yeah, something like that. Check load average. Load average is pretty high. I wonder what else does that. Um, okay. This, this is the fun of run, running a live demo on your machine. You'll have to get a, yeah, a bigger machine. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, um, what I'm seeing is essentially seems like Docker taking a lot of CPU right now. That's interesting. Okay. Well, yeah, it's open shift. A bit of a problem. But this is. I assume it's running latest OpenShift 2, so I'm not entirely sure what release there is. Okay, well, I mean, we can see that Scope is running on OpenShift. Fortunately, we're having a little load issue with this VM. We'll have to investigate that. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. I think live live demos off the cuff are always fun to, to watch, but it's really, I think it's a good example of um, the compatibility between Kubernetes and OpenShift 2, pretty much the same commands that you run that's right, um, that's right. OC, OC does pretty much the same thing as Kube CLT yeah, yeah. plus all of the OpenShift work too. So um, we try very hard at OpenShift to stay in sync with the latest release of Kubernetes. We're pretty much in a, in a couple of week cadence after each release. So um, I think we've, we've really, um, we're, we're, we're very happy with the, the world of Kubernetes for cluster management and I'm seriously thrilled to see um, the weed scope stuff looking so nicely on OpenShift. So it's a lot to say uh, thank you for, and, and that's kind of the power of, of collaborating together on this. So I know a lot of people work um, behind the scenes to, to get everybody up to speed on OpenShift, and, and I really appreciate the work you guys did. So um, hopefully we can do uh, a lot more stuff together in the coming months. And um, we'll see, see about trying to run some of this on um, at scale. Um, yeah, absolutely. Online and OpenShift dedicated as well, I think. And the, the other folks who are um, hosts and operators for um, 
they are using OpenShift on the hood, like GetUp Cloud and Cloud Isle and a few other um, pause providers out there uh, are going to be interested in this. I, I really do want to uh, take an, another shout out to Albin. Um, the traffic, traffic, traffic control stuff uh, is something um, and latency issues are, are near and dear to my heart as a web app developer. So I think highlighting that and how to use Weave Scope for that was, was really awesome. And I'm hoping we can entice some developers um, to start thinking about this in a, in a more realistic way. Thanks again, everybody. Um, I'm not seeing any more questions. Going once, going twice. Um, we'll talk to you all next week again for the next um, OpenShift Commons. And you can find this recording um, on our blog post next week. Probably by Monday, it should be up and um, available. So thanks again.